why am I here? So our community outreach team has noticed that some of the most commonly asked questions during maybe office hours or on Discord are about how to write a resume. So today we've decided to take our typical walk through Twitch stream this Friday to try to help um, out the InfoSec community in this area and tech in general. So my goal is to do my best to honestly and openly answer your sp specific questions related to resume writing, to try to offer some advice on best practices that would be suited for any position, to have an interactive conversation with you during the presentation so that you can follow along and maybe answer some of my questions and you'll have the opportunity to also ask questions during the presentation. Um, so earlier, I think I may have mentioned that we've got some community ambassadors who are gonna help me assist with this <laughs> and moderate. Um, and I thank them profusely. And I only ask that if you wouldn't mind waiting until the end of the presentation to ask questions. And the only reason I say that is because they might be answered before the end of the presentation. So that way we won't get too repetitive. Um, excuse me. And if we do run out of time, and I'm <clears throat> sorry, guys. If we run, run out of time and I'm not able to answer each question that you have, <clears throat> Please feel free to reach out to me on Discord or LinkedIn after the presentation, and I will do my best to give you an answer then. Okay. So just something to note before we really get into it. Um, it is important to know that I'm speaking to a global audience right now and different countries may require information to be written differently than what I'm suggesting today. I want you to know that I am sensitive to this. Also, every person here watching this presentation is a unique person with a unique background and set of skills. And so because of this, I did have to keep some of my answers a little bit more general. The best practices or do's and don'ts might, not might, will look different for each of you. But overall, the presentation should improve your chances of landing that dream job, whether you're applying for a position with Offsec or with any other company. And it's also important to note that there really is not going to be a one-size-fits-all response to your questions. But if there were, we wouldn't be here today, would we, right? So, um, there were some very specific questions uh, that, oh, excuse me, because this topic is so vast, I did ask our community outreach team to help me narrow it down a bit. Um, so they offered biweekly polls to gather your specific questions on what topics to cover more at length. So I'd like to start the presentation off by just answering some of those very specific questions that would be a little easier for me to answer immediately. <laughs> and. The first one is what stands out for me right away when I'm looking for a resume or looking at a resume that makes me want to call someone right away. And okay, this isn't the easiest one of the questions, but, but in general, the first thing that I'll say is, did someone at Offsec refer you or someone who knows someone at Offsec? And the reason I say that is because candidates who are referred by employees who work here or who know us personally are often someone who would be reached out to right away. And the same would be true for any other company. But that aside, I do look for a few basic things. So does your resume show me that you fully read and understood the job description? So what I mean by that is, do you meet the minimum requirements for the position? Did you take the time to complete all of the application questions in full, which includes your full name first and last? <laughs> contact information, location, or any other questions that were asked of you. All applications and resumes that are submitted to OFSEC 
are private. We maintain your confidentiality. Not everyone in the organization can see your application or resume because we do have security access protocols in place for that. And we also hold true to GDPR standards and protocols for privacy and confidentiality. It's also important to note that unlike some larger staffing agencies, when you apply for a position at OFSEC, your resume is not added to a giant pool where recruiters can just call you at random. I have worked for companies that do this. These companies often require their recruiters to call at least 30 people a day at a minimum. And in the business, we call those headhunters. And it's kind of a dirty word for a specialized technical recruiter. Um, so when I look at your resume, what I'm looking for is, am I able to read it clearly? Is it organized? Is it easy to follow? Does your resume tell me your story? Which means describing your experience, your accomplishments, your major achievements, or ways in which you went above and beyond in your career so far. So some examples would be if you have a demonstrated history of success. So I can see a progression in your career with um, advancements or different things that you've done. I also notice how long you've been with each position and would tend to favor someone who wouldn't be a quote job hopper um, so over someone who is. Um, not to say that that would exclude you from getting a job or from me calling you or reaching out, but someone who doesn't would reach out, we reach out to first. And is your resume honest? That's an interesting question there. Um, so for every application and resume that I review, I do have to check um, certifications that you list to make sure that they're legitimate and valid um, prior to reaching out to you to arrange an interview. Um, if you provided a LinkedIn profile or any kind of link to a GitHub or whatever, I, I do check those out and I make sure that they match, that things look the same. And um, also that um, if you have a portfolio, I may read through your blog and, you know, kind of check things out, look at what um, your application was that you developed. And that's the kind of thing that um, I do to kind of weed people out. And um, so anyway, uh, question two. <laughs> so should you list the names of the organizations that you've worked for in the past? Now, more specifically, this question, this question said, um, so if you have experience as a penetration tester and you write the name of the company or the organization that you worked for, like a bank, for example, on your resume, would that hinder your chances when applying for a position with a different company, such as a similar bank or firm? That's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> and my short answer is, please include the name of your organization, bank, firm, company, government agency, along with your title and dates of employment on your resume. Why do I say that? If you leave pieces of information on your resume out, um, so let's say you did work at a bank and you use the bank's name, but you didn't add your title or dates of employment. How does the person on the other end who's reviewing your resume know that you were a penetration tester for the bank and when? You could have been a bank teller. <laughs> I wouldn't know because I don't know you, not yet. Um, but the long answer is if you have signed a non-disclosure agreement, or a non-compete agreement, which the second one is slowly becoming an illegal practice in the United States, that could mean including the name of a bank and then later applying to a competitor, it could be a problem for you. So I've included a link here that we can drop into um, the chat later and, and give to the audience just some FAQs on non-compete agreements and what the federal laws are in the United States. So my advice here would be to be very mindful of what agreements you sign prior to starting a new job and think about how they would affect you in the future 
if you decide to leave um, so that before you accept this position. That way, if you do leave, your options aren't limited and do your best to be honest. And if you, and you have to cooperate with your non-disclosures and in some cases, non-compete agreements. <laughs> um, the third question here is, should a resume be written in dark mode? Uh, my short answer is no, but we're going to go over why in a few minutes. And how much personal information, um, yeah, excuse me, <laughs> how much personal information should you include on, include on your resume? I want to preface my response by going back to the previous slide that explained that I am, I understand I'm speaking to a global audience, but um, so when applying for a position directly to a company based in the United States, you can include your full name first, last, a last name or with your last name and initial is not enough. And it kind of makes it appear as if you have something to hide. So definitely include your contact information, your preferred email address and phone number. How is someone supposed to reach out to you after you've applied if you didn't provide the best way to do that? And your location. You can enter your full address if you want to, but you can also be slightly vague with this. So for example, if you live in the United States, just using a city and state is enough in a different country, the country and region is enough. Um, you don't have to have your full address on there, but um, in some countries, it might you might be required to write your full address. But some things that you do not have to include and should not include would be any personal or private information about you that is protected by law in the United States, which includes race, gender, marital status, disability, genetic or medical information, birth date, religion, and the list goes on. So I have also included here a link to give you detailed information regarding the federal equal opportunity laws in the United States. Um, and number five, should you use Google Voice and a separate email address when applying for a position? Well, I would think that everyone on this stream tonight has an in or whatever time has an interest in privacy, confidentiality, and security. So my quick answer is if you're applying for a position directly to a company, feel free to use your real phone number and best email to reach you. But if you are posting your resume online or adding it to a website or a profile, like LinkedIn, for example, I would suggest creating a special email address specifically for that job search and maybe not add your phone number. Recruiters have access to those sites and can contact you directly on there. And this way you won't be harassed with several phone calls or emails about positions and sometimes positions that wouldn't even interest you or <laughs> that have nothing to do with what you like. Um, and number six, should you provide hyperlinks to badges and certifications on a credible? To be perfectly honest with everybody here, I wasn't even sure what a credible was until I saw this question and I did have to look it up. I went to their website and all I could say is I would suggest reading through their privacy policies and take a look at the pricing model. It didn't appear to be a free service to me. It might be, but what is free is listing your relevant certifications on your resume, and that's easy to do. Okay, so as Jim was saying earlier, writing a resume can be intimidating and daunting. So here we go. I would like to ask all of you a few questions and I'm hoping that you'll play along with me. If you could use the chat box to type your answers, I'm just gonna ask some questions here. So um, how many of you have tried to do a quick online search to find the right resume, resume template to use for career and infosec or in general? 
And so in the chat box, if you want to uh, type one, yes, I've looked online and found that search useful. Type two, yes, I found it even more confusing and the search was not helpful. Or three, that you've never looked for a resume template online. Now, I can't see the chat here. We're getting a pretty good mix of numbers. Let's see, we got three, two, two, three, two. Looks like more twos. I'd oh. say twos okay. in the lead, followed by ones and threes. Yeah, yeah. And um, twos, uh, that is probably right about where I was too. Um, I also just prior to doing this presentation, did a quick Google search. And personally, I found it to be very intimidating. I use the search parameters InfoSec resume examples, and we'll take a look at what I found in a moment. Aside from thousands of examples of templates, I also found that there were companies that advertise that they will write your resume for you at a cost. You don't have to pay someone to write your resume for you, but if you do, just be mindful about who you choose to do that for you. Sometimes these companies will use the exact same template for every single candidate, and that is something that someone who's reviewing your resume will notice, especially if other people have used that same service and are applying for the same position. Um, and I've also noticed that boot camps sometimes may offer this as a service, and those resume templates look exactly the same word for word. Fun fact. So just be careful. One thing that people are, have been asking is how, how to stand out from the crowd. And I can tell you that your resume won't stand out from the crowd if word for word it is exa exactly the same as the other people who apply. So instead, I try to look into free programs or templates that I can use. There are many free visual design programs out there. I personally love Canva, but there are, you can use a Google Doc, a Word Doc, and convert it to a PDF. There are many ways to write a resume. And um, so anyway, you don't have to uh, use anything that, pay, that you pay for. And so going back to what my search results were, this is what I saw. And up close, these are, I'm sorry that these are a little blurry, but this is kind of all these different resume templates, including the dark mode. So does that look familiar to what you guys have seen? <laughs> and uh, so what are you supposed to do with that? And so my suggestion would be, let's keep it simple. And here are a few recommendations on where I think to start. Um, so one, get organized, then we're going to narrow your focus. We'll discuss resume length and how to keep it clear and concise. We'll talk about formatting, some do's and don'ts and for best practices, how and where to display your experience and showcase your skills, and how to get noticed when applying for a position. Now, to me, the format you choose doesn't really matter as much as you think, sort of. Um, and what I mean by sort of is just, your resume just needs to be clean and easy to read. <laughs> and so the way you write it and how you display the information would depend on the position you're applying for, but as long as the important stuff is upfront, so to really shine and stand out from the crowd, I like to think about a resume as if it were a handshake and you're introducing yourself to the person who's reading it. So. Make sure that when you do that, you're telling your story, you're describing what you're passionate about, and maybe what you're looking for in your career, and do it clearly and quickly. And make sure that anything relevant to the position is personal, that it highlights your skills with honesty, um, and your certifications try to list them right at the top <laughs> in the, on the front page. And the reason I say that is many readers won't make it past page 
one, let alone page two. And uh, sad, but I'm sorry. <laughs> and so to get organized, and this is a very um, important first step to take, um, it helps us to see exactly how much information that you could include on your resume. Now, notice I said could. Um, and there's a reason for that. But what I would suggest doing is make a very comprehensive list of the different positions you've held. So that includes your employer names, your titles, dates of employment, your responsibilities, not what your team did or what the technologies your team used, but keep it personal to what you've done your major accomplishments, the direct impact that you had on the organization. This could be volunteering for opportunities to go above and beyond what is outside of your typical workload. Times that maybe you were asked to participate in a special project and what the results were, or opportunities that you took the initiative to solve a challenge for an employer. Because employers want a go-getter, not someone who simply just does the mere, bare minimum of what is asked of them. And next, we're going to list all of your certifications, education, and continued education, um, your skill set. So keep, again, keep this real and honest. And um, so when you think about honesty and reality here, if you were to sit down right now with the experience that you have, what would you be comfortable doing right away? It's not always important that you know and meet every single requirement listed on a job description. Many employers will ask for the sun, the moon, and the stars. But if you highlight what you do know and what you have done, it gives the employer an idea about where you are in your career and what you still need to learn. And oftentimes they will invest in that opportunity to, to teach you, but only if you're honest upfront. And I'd also use your portfolio to your advantage. So this could include a LinkedIn profile, Stack Overflow, Stack Exchange, um, any kind of profile, you can see them all on here. <laughs> um, and if you do participate in social media, like Twitter or Discord, for example, you can include that information on your resume. Just be sure to keep your work profile for work only and personal for your personal life. <laughs> um, and create a list of groups that you're actively involved with or volunteer for and scores from CTFs or hacker rank scores or whatever. This may look like a very long list or for less experienced people, it could be a shorter one. But now we have your whole career laid out there for you. And as you are going through and applying for positions, now you can narrow it down. So how are we going to do that? <laughs> so for every position that you apply to, you really only need to include your relevant information from the list that you just created from the previous slide. So my read the job description and make sure you read it thoroughly. So what is the role? What is the employer asking for? The responsibilities, the technologies you need to know, how many years of experience? What is it that they say that they want you to do every day? <laughs> um, and what are the bonus skills or preferred skills? And do you have any of those? Evaluate that. And do you meet most or at least the minimum job requirements? If so, green light, go ahead and apply. But an important rule to a thumb that I would say is avoid using what's calling the spray or what's called the spray and pray method when applying for jobs. So here's another fun question. <laughs> Has anyone in the audience, have you heard this term before spray and pray? I don't want to assume that you have or not. So in the chat box, if you want to put one for yes or two for no. So can anyone 
yeah it looks like you're getting a good mix but um i'm definitely leaning on the side of the ones okay all right well i don't want to get too much into if leaning on more side of the ones if you've heard of it before i don't need to explain it but blasting your resume to whatever you see posted it doesn't really help your chances of getting a new position it actually hurts them you'll be wasting your time receiving tons of rejection letters and you might lose track of where you've applied and what the position is um and so because we're also talking about narrowing your focus another question here for the audience is what do you think is the appropriate length of a resume um so in the chat box Type how many pages you think the longest a resume should be. And I am sorry that I can't see the chat box. <laughs> oh, looks um, See, people saying two pages, a couple people saying one. Yeah, so two pages is great, and I would keep it to no more than three. Um, and so every resume that you write should be tailored for the position that you're applying to. So the way that I do this is I have two copies of my resume. There's the long version, which has every single thing on it that we mentioned before. And then the short version that narrows the focus on what the job is asking for or the employer. Great job, you guys. Okay, so this slide is a little bit heavy, um, but it goes more into um, the length of your resume. And so now that we know that we're trying to keep our resume to no longer than three pages, what edits can you make to keep your resume concise and stick to that three page rule? So this depends on your level of experience and how much information you're trying to include. I tried to keep this information vague and separate it out, but a seasoned professional would be six years and above, mid-level professional, three to five years, entry professional, zero to two years. So for the three-page rule, again, I'll re reiterate, read the job description in full. And now going to season professionals. You can remove any work experience from your resume prior to the year 2000. And why? No recruiter, HR professional, or hiring manager really needs to see that much information. And honestly, do you think that any work that you did prior to the year 2000 would be relevant to what you do today? Again, trying to focus on what's current and relevant for your career and interests today that also would be a fit for the job description and allow you to showcase your skills and what you know is really what's most important. And one thing, a common mistake I see on a seasoned professional's resume is redundancy. So if, let's say, your companies have changed, but the positions that you do are somewhat the same, you can um, just use your current company and list that out, all of the things that you want to say about that. And for all the rest, I would just add the company name, your um, position or title, the dates of employment, and then add highlights, achievements, or anything that shows that you went above and beyond. So for example, for me, if I wrote technical recruiter and I, and I was at six different places, I really only need to describe the, the first one and everything else I can just say technical recruiter. It's the same. <laughs> um, but for the mid to entry level um, professionals. So there are a couple of pitfalls to avoid. One is the fake it till you make it. If an HR professional or a recruiter doesn't notice this on your resume right away, or in an interview with you, the hiring manager definitely will. So some general rules to follow. It, if you have any projects that you completed in school or through a boot camp, they should be listed under your education or continued education section of the resume. 
boot camps are not considered work experience. Now, if you participate in a project that is something personal, not um, through school or through a boot camp, you can add a section called projects and links to those projects. And that is a way to add professional experience, but it's not considered professional experience. Professional experience, this section is for the positions held that are relevant to the job that you're applying for. And I would just follow the same guidelines as a seasoned professional. But if you feel that your resume appears to look too short, you really don't have to worry as much about being redundant. <laughs> And once you make these edits, continue evaluating. Did you include the information for the position that's most relevant that you're applying for? Did you remove information that wasn't? Did you showcase your certifications, your skills, highlight your achievements, and did you keep it honest? And until you get to three pages, keep narrowing that down. A couple other rules follow. So um, earlier, I did answer very quickly the question about using dark mode on a resume. So I'd like everyone to do me a favor and close your eyes just for a moment. And I want you to think about the person on the other end who's reviewing your resume. And I want you to imagine that it's printed and they only have a black and white printer. So you can open your eyes and if you wanna play along, do you have any guesses about why I might have asked you to imagine someone printing your resume in black and white? So in the chat box, if you wanna write one, you have no idea why I, I um, asked you to imagine that. Um, two, if you have a guess, but you're not really sure, or three, you definitely understand why I asked you that. Looks like we're getting some threes in there pretty much across the board. Um, awesome. There, there is a, a two slipped in there, but a uh, couple twos. Yeah, yeah, slipping in. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'll, the reason why I, you know, personally, I have gone to interviews um, where it could be one person or a room full of people, and either that person or room full of people had a printed copy of my resume and it was in black and white. So going back to that question about dark mode or trying to get creative by making your resume look like an IDE or terminal, do you think that everyone in the room would be able to read my resume clearly if I was using dark mode? <laughs> and so again, question for the audience, one, it's a good idea to do that or two, bad idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. De definitely yeah. getting the twos here now. Okay, right, cool. Um, okay, so now that we got that, by the way. Um, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about some basic guidelines for using color. If you do decide to use color and you don't have to, um, here are some of the rules that I would use. So choose at most one to two colors, either muted shades or super dark shades um, that are complementary colors. So you can Google that and see. So they're opposite ends of the color spectrum. They coordinate well together. Um, an example, like dark blue and dark gold look very nice together. Or you can choose one color, but use slightly different shades of that color to indicate different things. Because the reason that we're using colors to create something that's visually appealing to the eye, but also to create a divide or separation. So that could be for highlighting specific words or sections, um, such as your name or the different sections of your resume, or creating a visual barrier, like a column or a header. And 
And so for your header, um, now following the earlier guidelines, you only need to have it on page one, especially if you're trying to keep you know everything down to three pages and just have your full name, location, and best contact information. And if you can include your certifications or anything that would be something that that particular position would want, keep that right at the top. Um, and that's really all for that section. <laughs> and bullet points are your friend. So um, rather than using paragraphs to describe your work experience, um, I recommend using bullet points to add all of your achievements and experience. It keeps everything clean, clear, and concise. And when using bullet points, um, try to avoid using vague statements and overused phrases, such as handled all aspects of operations or used a wide variety of programs, or avoid using statements um, with like responsibilities include or manage daily operations. <laughs> um, this usually tells the reader that you don't care enough to give the detail or put in the real effort. And you know, what do we say here at Offsec? Try harder, right? <laughs> and sadly, it also will cause a lot of readers' eyes just to glaze over and your resume won't get the attention that it deserves. And that's not what we're trying to do here. So every statement that you put on your resume should be painting a very clear picture in the mind of the reader that tells the story about what you've done that is impressive and relevant to the job that you're applying to. And so some extra best practices. Um, this applies to any resume for any position in any industry when using bullet points. You should begin each bulleted phrase with a strong action word or verb. I've given a bunch of examples here. I don't need to read them all to you. Um, but I would say that just be cautious about um, overusing words or repeating yourself. <laughs> and I like to use a thesaurus. That's also your friend. And never end a list of skills or accomplishments or phrases with etc. What does that mean? The reader isn't going to know. <laughs> and just some additional best practices. Um, so we might forget, um, but here I am to remind you. Um, so have a friend or relative or whoever review your resume after you complete it and you've reviewed it. Um, and that's because it's hard to catch all of your own spelling and grammar errors and computers definitely do not always catch those errors, but another human might, um, including some of my errors on this slide. So I apologize for that. Um, and other additional things that I notice um, is whether or not you use the correct tense when you are talking about your position. So in your current role, I would notice present tense in former positions, past tense. I would make sure that the fonts are all formatted correctly. So same font size and type for each section and make sure everything matches um, and that your bullet points line up or if you don't do these things at the end of the day, your resume will end up looking like a hot, unreadable mess. <laughs> and just some quick tips here for the entry level resume. So your resume alone may not be enough, but you can get creative. And don't expect that earning a certification alone is going to land you a dream job. It's the hard, it's what you do with that hard work that will lead you to the path of success. What I've noticed in the InfoSec community is that it's very tight knit, but there's a large presence on social media. There are conferences, free webinars, free publications. So I would just suggest getting involved and that could include attending these virtual webinars or live conferences if you can. Um, 
Those are really fun to go to. Uh, paying attention to current news and blogs, reading anything you can, contributing or commenting on those. Um, talk with the community on Discord, Twitch, LinkedIn, et cetera, community meetups. If you browse through Slack, you could probably find a channel related to something that you're interested in. And um, you can use CTF platforms or others just to show your scores, to showcase um, how well you're doing with something and contribute to GitHub projects and repositories that are meaningful to what you wanna do. And these are the things that you can put on your resume. And, but most of all, get to know the community and let them get to know you. People who refer member will refer members of the community who they know. And as we already talked about, referrals are considered very valuable. And now I'd like to give the audience the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have that if I didn't answer them, and I'm gonna do my best to do this live, but I won't be able to, for whatever reason, see it. <laughs> Hopefully um, someone can help me. Yeah, no worries, no worries. There Thank were you. some questions that came in as we um, as we went through. So let's uh, let's go through and scroll back and grab some of them. Um, there is a comment about it's easier to include any work later. It's easier to include any work than later. Explain why you have a gap. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's yeah. A, a gap in employment. Okay. Yeah. That's why I said when, if you, yeah. So what you can do is label that section relevant work experience. And then at the very end, you can write other work experience available upon request or on your LinkedIn profile, you can have it all listed, but your resume can um, be enough. Like you only have to have right relevant does that make sense i'm hoping Sorry. yes yes <laughs> okay yes. most definitely um okay so next next question would it be advised or not to list a disability on a resume so that people know what they're in for that's an interesting question so interestingly enough i have a background um in social work and i have worked with people with disabilities so the my answer to this question would be no you shouldn't put that on your resume but there are accommodations that can be made for you for your disability whatever that might be and you could add that in your application lab later and i guess the only thing that i would say is let's say you might be have a hearing impairment um and or you need an, an interpreter for that um, that might be something to add to a cover letter so that the person who is trying to reach out to you will know. But otherwise, no, you won't, wouldn't have to put that. On. It would be a way to discriminate against you, and that is not advisable. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question. If someone has, say, 15 years of experience in IT as a software engineer and manager, and none of it was InfoSec, other than certifications such as OSCP. What should one focus on when writing the CV? Well, that would be um, your skills. So if you've been a software engineer, okay, so let, wait, let me go back to that question. Are you trying to get into the InfoSec com like community or are you talking just about a technical resume in general? I think the assumption, it's an older question, so, so we'll see if they, um, they respond, but I think the assumption is, is to get into the InfoSec community. Okay, okay. Um, so I, you're going to have to think of your resume a little bit more like an entry-level resume. Um, a career change does mean that you're starting at the, a lower rung on the ladder, but there probably will be some... Um, technical things that you may have used and that would be relevant. So going back to reading the job description and seeing what it is that you do have, throw those skills on there and get involved in the community in other ways so people get to know you. 
All right. TJ mentioned that he remembers reading a, a resume from somebody that had 25 pages. So um, more Whoa. of a comment than a question, but yeah. TJ, did you read all 25 pages? <laughs> that would be impressive. Yeah. 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 Um, should consultants include the name of clients in addition, in addition to the consultancy name? I wonder about how NDAs play into that. Hmm. Well, yeah. Um, I include them on, on my resume. So as I mentioned earlier, I, I've worked for staffing um, companies and I'll put them on my resume that I am applying you know, to a position for, but I don't put them on my public profiles. Um, again, you have to go back to what agreements you've signed with the companies and and follow those rules. That's the best that I can offer advice on that one. Yeah, I, th I think honestly, that's a kind of tough one, just from the standpoint of NDAs are important to be be followed up on. And I think a lot of companies um, essentially don't, the, the part of the contracts that, that get done with the consultancy uh, assessment is that you do not use them for, you know, in, any other purposes such as solicitation. Um, now, granted, that's in one context, but I think it's fair to extrapolate that out into uh, other, other items as well. Mm -hmm. um, someone made a comment about, is it a good idea to fill in white space on the resume with buzzwords written in white ink. So, so that way the, the idea is it's invisible when they read it, but it will get through like say HR screening systems. I have never heard of that before. Um, so I don't have a, a screening system except for myself. Um, I don't know what other companies do. Um, that is an interesting question. And I think you might be wasting your time if you do that. Um, and, and again, if you're adding skills on your resume, these should be the, these keywords or buzzwords as you referred to them as, these should be honest and, and what you actually have. So, it's not going, it's not going to work. <laughs> I think there's a generalized belief. I, I, I know I've ran into this before, and this is not new. This is, I, I remember hitting this over a decade ago, that there's a lot of people when they list um, job postings, they'll have keywords uh, on it, where if you don't include those keywords in your resume, then it just won't, it won't get processed it won't get considered it will be automatically just bumped out and that's led to a lot of people to have these sections of their resumes where they just list like tools or skills and they just have this massive pile of words you know and the end map you know shell etc cetera, etc cetera. and and like do, do you ever find any sort of value in that whatsoever yes if it's relevant and if it's um I would keep it concise. So I've seen resumes where people will highlight these things um, and you or make them bold throughout the resume. You don't have to do that. Um, and I guess I would, yeah, if you're going to list the skills that you have, list them honestly i i really don't know how to answer it better than that it, it's um it's about what you know what you can do and if there is there are going to be some people out there that are just going to look at keywords i'm going to be honest with you um and especially in experienced recruiters or hr professionals that's what they're going to rely on is keywords um i go a little bit further than that. So it's hard for me to speak to that because I don't use keywords. I read your whole entire everything. <laughs> so um, uh, um, uh, keywords can help if they're honest. And I would just keep like a bulleted list quick and Makes easy. Sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, someone Someone asks, um, should I pay someone to write my resume? Well, we did talk about that earlier. You can, um, but you don't have to. So it just, and 
we already mentioned that in the, in the slides before, so I won't get into that it, again, talking about why and what you should look out for. Um, I'm going into my third career change now. If I have six years in each career, should I categorize my work experience into one group? Okay. So <laughs> this is a, a loaded question. Okay. So you're on your how many career changes? It says third career change and six years in each career. Okay. So again, have a long, long list resume with all of those things. And even your LinkedIn profile can have all of those things on it. And whatever you're applying to, whatever is relevant out of that, pick and choose, add relevant <laughs> as your as your word, relevant experience, and add that. That's all you need to do. You don't have to include the rest of the things. Like if you are a bartender and you're applying for a job as a software developer, they don't really relate. Yeah. Um, a question here. Does my home lab count as experience? When I say home lab, I mean like if I made a Splunk index or if someone did pen testing or has some vulnerable images, so on and so forth. Yeah, so I've seen this before. Um, it doesn't exactly count as professional experience, but that would be something that I would consider a project. And if you have a way to display that or a, some kind of way to describe it on your resume under personal projects, that would be um, something that you can add to your resume. So I, I can say that there is someone um, who was hired at OFSEC, who maybe was just shy of the years of experience that we were looking for, but they did have on their resume a list of all of these applications that they had created, and I checked them out, and they were legit. <laughs> and so seeing that, uh, it, and then talking to the person, it was a great interview and he got hired at the company. So there we go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I have just an A plus cert, but I'm trying to get involved a lot more with cybersecurity. What's the best way to go about this? Uh, well, that, that may not be as essentially as relevant to this one. Um, you know, self-serving answer, go to OSCP. No, um, I, I would say <laughs> if, if you're at this level, um, A plus, lo look at our 100 level material and there will um, be something for you there. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, for those making a career change to InfoSec, it's still important to list employment history. People will include them so it doesn't get um, automatically declined. Oh, oh, okay. So yes, yes, yes. The, the, there are two, two separate comments. Sorry. Um, someone makes a comment about, uh, making career change to InfoSec. It's, a, it is still important to list employment history. So it's a, it's a statement, not a question, but is it a statement you agree with? Okay. So I'm going to go back to saying that I agree that your work history does need to be included, but not every single thing on a resume. A resume is a quick introduction and you can have talking points. There are job applications that you probably will have to fill out. And also if you have, do have a LinkedIn profile, you can have everything listed on there as long as the relevant work experience. So that's what we're discussing. It's not excluding work experience, it's including relevant work experience. Um. Extrapolating out from a comment that someone else made, um, what do you think about different file formats? Um, how do you, what do you, what do you suggest people do? PDF, plain text, Word document? Sometimes when, uh, if it's not in a PDF format, um, if it gets uploaded into a system, the formatting can get a little bit messed up. So I would just recommend PDF because across the board that generally works um, when you're adding someone's resume or looking at it, the, you won't have formatting errors. Well, that sounds good. Um, looks like that is all of the questions that came through. And look at this, we started on time. 
and we're ending on time. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but like this never happens in my life. So uh, something, something's clicking appropriately here. So, so Amy, thank you very much. Let, let me actually thank say you. Um, publicly, like th this I thought was, was excellent. Very, very good. Um, I think that these sorts of items, these, these soft skill items that that like really get lost in the hustle and bustle of what's the latest attack and the different shells and this that the other thing these are so important and, and they they get overlooked a lot um makes me think of other ideas on here uh, we have robert that leads up our pen test team um i'm thinking you know a chat you can let us know what you think about this but like possibly be, bring robert on to talk about what it's like to scope a, an assessment you know the, I, items like that i think would would be really good this one i thought was dynamic um it was uh it was it was perfect I, I i great presentation extremely well done um thank you thank you very much thank you and i'm very humbled and honored to be able to do this today so thanks everybody for coming and um yes you can send me your resume on discord <laughs> and uh, now i'm gonna hop off but have a wonderful rest of your evening or morning or whatever time it is <laughs> right all right. And on that note, I'm going to shut down the stream. No outro music. I don't think anyone wants to hear me sing. Uh, so we'll just uh, we'll end the stream for the day. And, and thank you very much. Appreciate all of you and look forward to what we're doing next Friday, um, which I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's something great. And so so come back for that one and uh, we'll be here for you. Talk to you all soon. Adios. <laughs>